hi hello how are you i'm pia and welcome to my october and november wrap up so during the month of november i had a little bit of a problem filming my wrap up for october because well my camera didn't work i'm here to combine both of them which is kind of weird because i remember combining october i think with september last year as well the curse of october which seems spooky okay i have so many books to talk with you about because i read like consistently like 10 books a month if not more so i'm gonna kind of go over these quickly but i will spend more time on things that like i haven't talked about in videos before nevertheless i have lots of books to share with you guys let's get into it if you don't already make sure to follow me on goodreads or friend me on goodreads i should say so that you can see my lab updates please don't send me messages on goodreads because i will not answer them but we can still be friends and you can see what i'm reading and i can see what you're reading and we can all share. The first two things that I finished in October I'm going to talk about together because they were both fine <laughs> and that is The Christmas Murder Game and Love Songs for Skeptics because I didn't really care about by the end of them. Christmas Murder Game it's a Christmas murder game it's kind of like Knives Out where all these people are competing to like own this house eventually and it's Christmassy instead of Christmas and it had some twists some turns but it was three stars it wasn't that crazy good. And then Love Songs for Skeptics I was just entirely misled <laughs> by this book and it ended up being more chiclety more deep than just like a romance and it wasn't even the romance that I signed up for so two stars two stars i was mad sorry <laughs> i read the final gambit which is the last book in the inheritance game series kind of because now there's gonna be spin-off books the handmaid books i guess that i'm so excited about the final gambit i gave this four to five stars i think i gave all of them four to five stars i was gonna say correct me if i'm wrong but i could just look i have given all of them four to five stars i freaking love the series this ending was fantabulous it was spicy it was fast paced it was fun i freaking love the series i really do i think they're really fun i think they're perfectly like ya like there's lots of drama and like a love triangle and like familial tension and it's just like perfectly ya and it's so much fun and i give it four stars. Next up I have a DNF. Now a DNF means do not, did not finish. Do not finish. Absolutely do not finish this book. I try to only do like one a month and now that I even try to DNF books often it's just that I feel like it's just such a freeing experience to be like I'm just gonna put this book down. You know what? Like I'm not gonna finish it. This one is an unfortunate one and it is Carrie Soto is back. Now you know who's back? Taylor Jenkins Reid. And you know what she's doing? She's writing about <laughs> cultures that she does not know. Well I wrote in my review I couldn't care less because I could not care less about this book. Like Tennis, it was like the same tennis match over and over again. It's the same character she's written about a hundred times over. It's nothing new. It's like a new decade, I guess, and a new setting, but that's about it. Like, you're still not own voices. You're still writing basically the same kind of female characters. And I'm just kind of tired of the it. Next up, I read The Kiss Curse. This is the sequel companion to The X-Hacks which I also read. <laughs> it's also in this wrap up. I read the X-Hex last year and really loved it. Had a good time. This is the companion following Gwen, who's the cousin of Vivian, Vivian, Vivi, something like that. And the other Penhollow brother. Not the other one, because there's three, but anywho. And it's their romance. It's more of a like annoyance to lovers, I guess. And it's really fun. I really like that these two characters really didn't want to like each other. And that was really fun. And I thought that their romance was cute. Didn't have too many problems with this. I thought it was fun and I liked reading it and it was very fast paced. I don't really care about the plot of these to be very honest with you. The magic system is very weak but it's not something that I'm in it for. <laughs> like I'm mostly in it for the vibes. It just feels like kind of watching Halloween Town. <laughs> it's kind of like what it feels like to me. Do with that what you will. The only thing is I kind of felt like Wells, I believe was his name. I feel like his character was a little bit flat and I also don't enjoy blood magic and there was a little bit of that towards the end of this book um, and I didn't get a trigger warning or anything like that and that's personally something that I don't enjoy reading about. So I gave that four stars on Goodreads. I think it was like more like a 3.5 but I got an arc of this and I sent out that review but I didn't put it on Goodreads so I don't recall. <laughs> Next up, I read as good as dead. <laughs> I'm so oh my god I'm screaming I'm screaming crying throwing up I'm, I'm so happy I read this okay this is the third book in the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series and let me tell you my ratings for the past two books first book I gave four stars second book I gave three stars this book I gave five stars I don't know what happened here we just like up to the ante like to the 10th degree like it was awesome <laughs> it was so so much fun and it was crazy it was unhinged as all hell <laughs> and it kept me on the edge of my seat i just did not know what was gonna happen i did not know how we were gonna get out of this pickle and it was crazy i support women's wrongs <laughs> you know what i mean and it was the third book in the series so i cannot tell you more than that but it was so fun i really do like the series as a whole next up i read a poetry collection this is called when you ask me where i'm going i don't read a lot of poetry but i do enjoy it from time to time i really can't say much about this to be honest with you i don't remember a lot of it i gave it three stars i'm sure i liked it at the time but i it's not stick it. Moving swiftly along, I read Love in the Time of Serial Killers. This is a book that intrigued me from the premise, from the get-go, from the start. It's about a young woman who's writing her thesis on like true crime and she's moving into her uh, dead dad's house. I'm just not sensitive today apparently. And as she's like packing up his things and stuff, she like meets the neighbor and she thinks the neighbor is like a serial killer because he has like all the signs of a serial killer, but it's like also like all the signs of like a meet cute. Like that's what the book is. And I think that's cute. I think it's a fun premise. And I did for some of it, like, like the sprinkling in of like true crime facts and trivia, I guess. <laughs> 
I don't know. I just feel like it didn't get like it didn't go past that and it became very annoying <laughs> with just all of the references to that and the uh, romance moved very very quickly or developed very quickly and there wasn't like a real reason why these two shouldn't be together other than the fact that the main character is insufferably annoying and just like doesn't know how to be a human. I found it fell flat for me. I give it three stars. Next up I read Do You Take This Man? I have a whole vlog where I read this so I'm not gonna tell you too much about it. This is about a divorce attorney who starts like officiating weddings after she does this like viral wedding officiation. Officiation? Is that a word? And this former pro football event manager who's also like helping do wedding stuff. I'm so smart today. And they like end up having to work together a lot and they butt heads and you know they're both like grumpy. I kind of like that they were like both grumpy and characters because like I feel like you don't see that a lot. I feel like there's like grumpy stuff I don't know what I mean. Other than that this like booked at some really weird like formatting things. I feel like we like skipped scenes and we like jumped in time oddly like we were the car and like you know it was strange. Other than that like it was kind of cute but like it was also kind of weird and like the deeper elements of this was like kind of out of the blue. I gave it three stars. It wasn't my favorite Denise Williams but I definitely want to read other one of hers that I haven't read which is the way I have if anyone falls in love suck my head. It's so bad. Anyway fastest way to fall. Next up I read The X Hex and by read I mean I reread it for my book club and I actually annotated it because I find this book so fun. It's so fun. It's so funny. It's cute. I really like the romance. It's a second chance romance and it, like I said this is like Halloween Town. I love Halloween Town. Halloween Town 4 is like one of my favorites. <laughs> it's definitely up there. Not my favorite movie. I don't know. Okay, I know they recast Marnie, but it's not my fault. It was still a better plot. <laughs> That's basically what this is. Again, like ley lines. I don't know what that means. Like <laughs> the magic. Who knows? But I really like the connection here. Maybe it's because like I read this probably for the first time when I was 19 and they like the main characters met when they were 19 and now they're reconnecting nine years later. I don't know if that was my like special connection. Who knows? But I just find this like very fun. I really do. I find it fun. I find it sweet. I like the chemistry. I just think it's like funny and I think it doesn't take itself too seriously and I really like that about it and I give it four stars. Next up I read Unmasked. My Life Solving America's Cold Cases by Paul Frickin' Holes. This is where I get into my like non-fiction bag because I've been reading so much non-fiction and you will see in the coming minutes. This is by Paul Holes. Paul Holes helped to solve the Golden State Killer case. There's memoir about that and about like what he's doing now and like what he did before then and like how he got to where he is. I liked it. I thought it was interesting. I like that he didn't present himself like very grandiosely. Is that a word? I don't know. And he was like very like honest about like the ugly parts of himself and like just like the mistakes he's made essentially in life and his like family mostly and like kind of how he's always kind of put his job first. I didn't rate this unless I absolutely adore like a memoir autobiography like this and give it five stars. I really don't know what to rate it so I didn't rate it but I do recommend it if you're into true crime and you can stomach that sort of stuff and you want to hear more about people who uh, do that for a living. Then I read Foul Lady Fortune. Now I know I didn't read this in the right order but you know what I had an arc of it and I wanted to read it. It sounded fun and it was fun. I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars because I think it was fun. I think it was spicy. It was exactly what it was pitched as. I think it dragged a little bit and I think I got a little bit lost because there's a lot of characters and a lot of politics and a lot of like things going on so it was a little bit confusing for me. However, I do think I'll continue with the series and I think I will go back. I think I will go back. Even though I'm spoiled for the ending but like I feel like everyone was spoiled for the ending like, of her previous duet. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go back and also continue on. Do I need to tell you what it's about? It's like 1930s Singapore meets a Marvel film. Then I read The Weight of Blood. Now, I had a really interesting time reading and reading this book because for most of it I was like this is so unbelievable. How could this ever happen? And then I was like oh shit. Yeah. I was like wow. Okay. This book went crazy. This is a Harry retelling and it is set at a school's first interracial prom. Now this is set in 2014. That was like really weird to me <laughs> because I was like what? I was like I thought this was going to be like a period piece. I thought it was going to be set in like the 50s or 60s I should say. That was my own fault. <laughs> like I didn't read into this but it's very interesting. It has like a podcast element. I didn't really love the audiobook but I did enjoy physically reading this a lot more and it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean it's just so filled with like racism I, I mean duh, duh. like racism and microaggressions and it's like it's very frustrating it's infuriating but I think it's a really important read and it's very interesting how it's told and and obviously if you know Carrie then you pretty much know what the story of this is except it's about a black girl at a first interracial prom and it was really good I honestly would reread this I think I might rate it higher if I reread it but right now it's at a 4.5 and I still think that's that's really good and thankfully Tiffany D. Jackson and I were back in business which is nice because she did in fact sign my copy I didn't get to meet her this time but I have met her before and she's great but I have like mixed relationships with her books but this one's a winner for me. Then I did a reread and this is just like these next few books like what I don't know what I was doing. I've reread Normal People. I think this is my favorite book of the year. I, I don't I don't want to spoil it. My favorite book of the year. I love this book too. Bits. I think about it constantly. I just love really deep like character studies and character driven stories and this is all that is. Lots of miscommunication. Lots of trauma and abuse uh, talked about and present within this book but I think they're like there's such a beautiful line that's like like despite everything like we still like come together and we still find each other and I 
can't remember the exact line. I think Sally Rooney has such a way with words and way in presenting characters that are very, very uh, deeply flawed and very raw and creates an emotional kind of narrative that feels very real. And I think she's a really talented writer and this is probably my favorite book of the year. So I had to read it again apparently. It's a short book, okay? Okay, then I read A Perilous Undertaking, which is the second Veronica's Beagle book. And I honestly couldn't tell you the plot of this book. Actually, I could tell you the plot of this one. Let me give myself a little bit more credit. But these books are just vibes to me. Like I just love hanging out with Veronica and Stoker and just like solving a little crime. I gave this three stars because it was like fun and like Again, I like didn't, I didn't get a lot out of it, I guess. I'm gonna continue with the series because I love these characters and I just like wanna hop around and solve mysteries. And Oh, the only thing I don't really like about this book is like their actual like jobs. <laughs> is that they like, they're like taxidermists kind of, but they also like collect like butterflies and stuff. And I just feel like they're like taking things from like their natural places. And I feel like that's kind of a very like colonist kind of idea. And I don't know why that's their job. <laughs> like, I feel like they're just like, taking stuff and I don't really love that. It's such a minute part of this. They're just like, how can we get these two characters in this random place? It's like, okay, they're, they're looking for butterflies. <laughs> I don't know. I have another DNF. I DNF'd. Thank you for listening and uh, thank you for listening to my review. This I listened to an audio, which I think is the only way you have to read this, but it was just like so weird. An audiobook narrator wrote a book about an audiobook narrator who was talking about audiobook narrations and it was just like so weird. I also like didn't like the romance at all. It was just not there at all. I just had no fun reading this book. I had no fun and I wanted it to be really fun. I thought it was gonna be fun. I said thank you for listening and I was like oh, thank you. I don't know. I, people like this book and I don't know why and very like obvious in its storytelling and the way it presents the narrative and the plot. It's just I didn't like it so I didn't have it. My review says who cares because I didn't care. Next up nonfiction. I read another memoir. I read Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing of Matthew Perry. Before we talk about the book I hate this cover. I hate this cover. I don't know why they chose this cover. I could come up with such a better cover. Also, a better title! Because he literally says in the book, he was like, oh, I like almost titled this book Unaccompanied Minor. And I was like, it's such a better fucking title. And I could like picture the cover. It would be so much better. I mean, I get it. But it's like, this is Matthew Perry's book, a memoir. <laughs> and I liked it. I mean, I didn't write it, but I did like it. And I think he did a really great job telling his story. More than anything, it's a story about his um, addictions and his struggles with addiction and his cycles through dealing with that for like most of, if not his entire life. And that was kind of like, that was kind of the overall like thread woven through everything. There have been things said about his book without people reading it. And I think this goes with any book ever. Just don't have an opinion on something <laughs> that you don't know about. <laughs> Especially like a memoir. If you're like, why is this author, why is this person telling a story about someone or referencing someone or, or mentioning them for the most part and unless it's just like i mean he does say a thing right? why did like keith ledger and uh phoenix die when like keanu reeves still walks among us and like that sort of like anecdotal like kind of phrase is like pretty inconsequential but like as far as like telling stories about someone in a memoir <laughs> publishers don't want to get sued um so if there are like names and like stories and personal like stories about someone like most likely they have been uh cleared like their names have been cleared so that the publisher can cover their ass and not get sued and in this book i actually really appreciated it and i think that it was really like not only like respectful but also like i guess like polite maybe of matthew perry to like some of his stories that he was telling and like you know people that he's loved and and had relationships with he would just be not say their name and i I think that's really cool and that's very chill of him. So this is another DNF. So it makes me sad. I DNF'd Ace is Wild. Now I really was excited about this one. It's about a bunch of high schoolers who are all like in this Ace forum chat room discord thing <laughs> and they get together and they're gonna they're gonna pull out of ice. The storytelling wasn't there for me. It wasn't the characters. It, it was more so to do with like the plot. Um, I didn't really love this kind of like setting of like uh, Las Vegas and like like the setup of the story I wasn't very sold on and it just like definitely just wasn't my thing. And that's what I said in my review, you know, I DNF'd it at 35% and it just wasn't my thing. I'm sure like other people really like high story that are set in a casino and like that kind of vibe, um, but they're just not my thing. So next up, I read this book for class. It's called Raising Fences. This is a uh, creative nonfiction. <laughs> Again, I didn't rate this because I read it for class. It was interesting. Parts of it were uh, questionable at best, um, but I guess an interesting story. And I have to write an essay on it, so. Next up I read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I love this. I talked about it in my last vlog. No, I talked about it in my last weekly vlog. This again is a very character driven story. It's a contemporary, it is about these two friends and it just like spans kind of like, not their entire, like 30 years of friendship. <laughs> it's like from when they're like children to when they're like in their 30s, 40s maybe. I would say it's kind of like normal people. I would say it's kind of like 
Firefly Lane. And yeah, I really like that it's like, it's contemporary, but it's also kind of historical fiction because it starts like in the 80s. I believe they're born in the 80s, so it might be in the 90s. I can't exactly recall, but you kind of like grow up with them, um, but it's not told entirely linearly, entirely linearly. But you just see them kind of like grow as people and how their relationship changes and it's completely platonic and it's this really interesting, like I would say not a character study, but it's like this relationship study of this like platonic friendship and over their years of friendship and how they like have conflicts and resolve them and whatnot. And, and mostly more than anything, like what brings them together are is video games. And so they're growing up with video games and they're learning and loving video games and they're making them. So that is very, very interesting. And I will say, I don't play video games. Last video game I played was probably The Sims. This book does a really great job of like including you in the conversation, of giving you the necessary information about what they're talking about and not talking down to you. And I really, really appreciated that because this book could have very easily just gone over my head and talked about like all this video game jargon. And I could have really lost the driving course of this book, which are these two friends and the other people in their life and stuff like that. So like, I feel like the author just did a fantastic job. I think these characters just like jump off the page. Like they were obviously so well thought out and so clearly developed. Like they felt like real people. I was like, should I look this up? <laughs> like did these people really create these games? Like I really believed it. And it was just like a really lovely reading experience. And I would so highly recommend this book. It was so fantastic. Then I read A Pinch of Magic. This is the first book in the Pinch of Magic series. This is a middle grade about three sisters and three magic items. And they are trying to solve a curse. They are trying to break a curse. This book is fun. Although I felt like a lot of it was quite slow going and only like the last hundred pages were kind of getting somewhere. I gave three stars. I think it was fun, but I don't think it was my favorite middle grade by any means. I will, however, pick up the sequel at some point. <laughs> I'll probably just get up from my library though and see if I genuinely like will continue on with the series because I believe there's like five books. So, <laughs> so I've got a lot of catching up to do if that's something that I choose to do. But yeah, I think I'll give it another book to see if I will continue. Then I read What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. This is my first T. King Fisher. And this one was really interesting. It's a short, I guess, novella. It's a retelling of the fall of the House of Usher, which is my ground pole story, which I, I'm not unfamiliar with. It has a lot to do with fungus and body horror. So if that is not your thing, do not read this. <laughs> About someone who contracts with some sort of fungi and starts acting funky. <laughs> We're trying to unravel that mystery and figure out what exactly that is, what is going on. And it was interesting. It was fun. It did its job and I had a good time reading it. I gave it three stars. Next I read The Atlas Six. <laughs> I don't even want to look at you. I read The Atlas Six. And now, if you're one of my friends, okay, I have so many friends. <laughs> I have so many friends who have read this book and who were like, give it 50 to 100 pages. And I was like, okay, queen. Like once I have time, I now if you see my 24 hour readathon vlog, I gave it the whole book. I gave it all of the pages. And mm -mm. this book made no sense. The plot, non-existent. We spend the entire plot w with our characters just A, hooking up <laughs> and b not understanding and talking about how they don't understand what the plot is they're like that's what we're doing that's what we're doing no that's what we're doing it's like and just the same thing see but they're like only five like only five there's six of us oh, but only five can be here only five can be here only five can be here and that's how only five can be it's like literally why else like how else would you solve like oh my god and i also would say doesn't make any sense so frustrating everyone's attractive which i get i've seen the character art okay but everyone's attracted to each other which like doesn't compute but Prisa slays 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 plot twist non-existent <laughs> it was bad I give it two stars <laughs> and then I read you've lost a lot of blood this is another short quick novella this one's kind of steampunky which is not exactly my vibe to be honest with you but it's uh I don't know it's kind of weird and I don't know if I entirely understood it and that seems to be the consensus on Goodreads <laughs> so the last book that I read in November oh my god the last book that I read in November was Beyond the Wand this is my last nonfiction that I read I think I read like four nonfiction books this is the magic and mayhem of growing up a wizard this is Tom Felton's memoir I've now read a lot of memoirs <laughs> and a lot of celebrity memoirs and I feel like I know a good amount about them and what their purpose is supposed to be so to me you know, I could be wrong a memoir is different from an autobiography autobi <laughs> is different from an autobiography in that if someone telling their own story with one connecting thread with one theme that connects everything that they're saying and to me this book just lacked uh this memoir just lacked direction in that way there were stories that i feel like were skipped over and i don't think that some things had a place because it did feel like it was trying to be autobiography but <laughs> it didn't have like enough story of a life feel to be an autobiography because it kind of it doesn't like start at birth or you like go to now you know what I mean and I, I gave it four stars and I don't think this is like my critique mostly of like Tom Felton because I think Tom Felton's a cool guy and I think he has his voice is very like strong in this book but I think it's mostly like the publisher or the editor whether or not they gave him direction is fine <laughs> but like there's no direction to this book and you really feel that while reading it it's 
it's like yeah you're learning about harry potter and like he spends a lot of time talking about harry potter and making the films and he kind of goes through every cast member is like this was my experience with them and this is like what they taught me and this is how cool they were and this is what we did and this kind of like little anecdote but then after like that portion is done it kind of loses a lot of focus and so if we were just like even if the book had just gone like relationship by relationship of being like my parents my brothers and then this cast member 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 my girlfriend this even if it was like a relationship based story i don't think that would have made any sense but then he also like goes to talk about like his addictions and like alcoholism and stuff like that and i feel like that was gonna like push towards the end and like very like tacked on not because it's later in his life like a more kind of contemporary recent struggle that he's dealt with but i do feel like it's something that could have had a lot more time spent like talking about and and i feel like it was just kind of rushed at the end which was really unfortunate because this is a short book and I feel like he could have spent so much more time going into stuff and I was a little bit disappointed in that it was really lacking kind of the like personal stories. I feel like we just kind of got like an interview almost of like oh like what was it like working with this person and I feel like it was kind of like an interview almost and even like some things he's like oh you know you know about the slap games we play like you know about this and I kind of I wish it wasn't writing to an audience or speaking to an audience that like you think already knows all this stuff because I think it's really important to like I don't know assume that they don't that they don't so that you can go into more detail and I don't know I feel like it was lacking direction it was lacking detail and it didn't like feel like a memoir because it wasn't very like well put together I guess I don't know I still gave it four stars because I found it interesting and I liked hearing him talk about stuff those are all the books that I read in October and November I said this last time but I will never do this again I don't know why I did it I do know my camera broke at this point I'm tired of talking but I hope you enjoyed this video you got something out of it if you did be sure to like and subscribe to all the things I'll see you in my next video bye